Okay. The soundbite okay. is they have a skewed moral compass or that they have less morals than we do, but they, they would kind of like that, just maybe not the way that we're putting it. So Cardin, Cardin is very high on care. Oh, so I'm a Higher raging Exmo? I'm the raging <laughs> Exmo? Because Jonathan Haidt was the person who developed this. I'm so tired of the theft of words. <laughs> I know. This okay. is kind of cool. Even relative to liberals, people who have left the church wow. have very little respect for in-groupness and authority. Okay. Wow. All three of us actually took this test. And yes. Cardin, you just took it. What if these people are just full of crap? Be the best, you gotta beat the best. Like how much of this on both sides is just dogma and not reality? Luke did not cherry pick these five. Hmm. Where they are closer to members of the church. So the purity scale is kind of, it seems to be kind of the anchor point. That's the biggest determining factor of whether wow. you're going to be a person out of the church or in the church. Got our scripture notes up and running. All of the scriptural references used in this episode will be brought to you by scripturenotes.com. For a free trial to scripture notes, please visit the link in the description. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I'm your host, Cardin Ellis. Today, I'm joined in the studio by Luke Hansen, Editor-in-Chief of Ward Radio News, as well as via Zoom by Jonah Barnes, the Associate Professor of All Things Apocryphal. And today, we are going to be talking about the moral foundation scores of basically Latter-day Saints versus ex-Latter-day Saints. And this article that was written by the Deseret News, applying moral foundations theory to current and former Latter-day Saints. Basically, we're doing a study that has been made by one Jonathan Haidt, who's uh, a favorite scientist or a favorite sociologist of this channel, who uh, sees what happens, um, I guess, when people lose their faith. And unfortunately for ex-Latter-day Saints, which is the euphemism we're using for uh, angry trolls on next morning subreddit, the, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> unfortunately for uh, people that hate watch us, what did they come up with, Luke? What's the sound bite? Essentially, they're, they have less morals than Latter-day Saints do, but it's not as bad oh. as it sounds because they would actually probably be happy in having less morals than we do. Now, we say oh, less geez. morals, like, do they just not let's, feel bad well, about killing yeah. somebody? Let, let's start like, to break I it down. Let's start to break it down. So there, so there was Jonathan Haidt, and he was like- What do you want to say, but you're euphemizing? <laughs> no, I actually do want to, I do want to actually explain it. Okay. The soundbite okay. is they have a skewed moral compass or that they have less morals than we do, but they, they would kind of like that, just maybe not the way that we're putting it. So here's how okay. it goes. So Jonathan Haidt, you know, atheistic, secular, but rational um, professor who studied uh -huh. moral psychology and, and did kind of the trailblazing in the realm of moral psychology. He came up with all these different questions asking people about what they value, where their morals lie, and broke it down and discovered there's about five morals. They split one of them into two, okay. and now there's six, but everybody still kind of uses the five, the five moral foundations. And before I explain them, I'm just going to list them. Okay. It's care and harm, okay. fairness and cheating, okay. loyalty and betrayal, authority subversion, sanctity degradation. Okay. So it's kind of explaining the two opposites. If we just... Um, list off the positive side. It's care, fairness, loyalty, authority, and sanctity. Okay. Excellent. And so what Jonathan Haidt found, before we explain these in depth, what Jonathan Haidt found, and he did actually pretty famous TED Talk on this a few years ago, okay. was that people of a more conservative bent are pretty high on all of the values. Okay. On all five of them. But people who are more of a liberal bent really mostly only care about care and fairness and mm. they don't care that much about loyalty authority and sanctity okay. okay interesting so let's drill down a little bit and we can pull up the graphic that okay. talks about what each one of these are okay so care and harm so this is something that more conservative and liberal people say that they value it says care and harm relates to the values of kindness gentleness and nurturance we have an ability to care for and be attached to others we also have the ability to feel uh, and dislike the pain of others so yeah care and harm so basically you're saying a liberal is like a two-fifth so person no. while a conservative is like a five-fifth <laughs> no, 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 no. person we'll see what the, see what the liberal what the liberal would probably say 
is that those other three values are actually kind of like bad like they get in the way of what really mm, matters mm. which is the care and the fairness hmm. so your mm. respect for authority or your emphasis on sanctity or loyalty will hurt a person's ability to experience or receive mm. care and fairness from society wow, so yeah so we we might put it as oh it's a skewed moral foundation but from their perspective it's they're saying you're putting things upon a pedestal that should not be equal to care and to fairness so the dad saying no honey we're not going to trans the kids is getting in the way of the yeah awful so yeah so the sanctity trying and the loyalty the and the authority is getting in the way of the fairness and the care and so it's causing harm. you mean the fairness and the cheating you know, I'm just <laughs> yeah and, and we'll get into the specific numbers but yeah, i'm just okay. going to go through what these mean really quick uh here again so okay. care and harm uh, fairness uh, we when we help our kind of others we value those who reciprocate from this generates ideas of justice rights and autonomy it also touches on proportionality that people take their fair share so they they actually this is the one that they ended up splitting into two okay. and the surveys that we're going to look at we're not going to touch this, but just so you know, he decided that this needs to be split into two, which is reciprocity. So you, what you put in is what you're getting out. Okay. Versus more of like a, everybody deserves equal chance. Okay. Or an equal outcome. So because a quality of outcome is different than a quality of, um, you know, beginning of yeah. So they've they've split of what opportunity. Did, what do they Sorry. call it? They, There's a quality of outcome and a quality of opportunity. Most conservatives are huge on a quality of opportunity. Yeah, and very open to those arguments. But a quality of outcome that's straight up communism. No way. Yeah. So they they split the fairness into equality and proportionality. So now there's six moral foundations, okay. but a lot of the research has just been done on the five. Okay. So for me, example, out of five, I'm a 1.5 on the equality scale. But I'm a 4.3 on the proportionality scale. Oh, so I'm very much like, no, you don't need to have the same just because everybody should get the same. No, that doesn't make any sense. But if you say somebody who works harder should get more, then I'm very much like, yes, 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 yes. That's true. So, but when you average those out, that's your fairness. Now, the third one is the, so third moral foundation is loyalty and betrayal. Humans have the ability to form shifting coalitions, and we value those who are loyal to these coalitions. From this idea comes the idea of patriotism and self-sacrifice for the group. So you can already see how yeah. more of a liberal bent okay. might push back against this. You shouldn't give preference to your own country just because it's your own country. That's silly. That's stupid. Whereas a more conservative person would say, no, you should have loyalty to those that you are part of the groups of your family, your country, even if you didn't get to choose that. You should still have the innate loyalty to them and preference them above others to a rational extent. Number four, authority and subversion. Um, humans also have the ability to form hierarchical social interactions. This foundation underlies virtues of leadership and followership, including difference to legitimate authority and respect for traditions. Okay. So you want to keep the traditions, you're high on authority. If you want to kind of blow up the traditions and do whatever you deem to be more caring and fair, then you do that instead if if you're low on that more okay foundation. and then and then just because i don't want to bury the lead here we ended up taking this test well i'm, I'm just going to do the last one oh, sanctity okay. and degradation this foundation was shaped by the psychology of disgust and contamination this one's actually the most interesting and it's going to be the most interesting in the data and for what it is itself because jonathan height was the person who developed this okay and he actually came up with these questions that he gave to people across cultures to see how it would be different and he would come up with like the strangest scenarios that you could think of to test this so one of the most famous ones was a man buys you know a chicken a dead chicken from the store takes it home with nobody else watching he has relationships with it <laughs> what I, I probably should have said children yeah. go out for this <laughs> and then he cooks it and eats it nobody else is aware of that he did this except for himself and the chicken's already dead okay is this okay not okay no opinion so that's kind of the sacredness the purity scale is things still have value and there's things you still should and shouldn't do even if it doesn't hurt anybody yeah okay so that's the purity 
Okay. So I don't that's think all dudes five like that would not <laughs> end up <laughs> not hurting anybody. That's the only problem. Is it's like, no, well, it's, I it's don't it's care. You do end. you. Like, I, I really don't care, bro. But like, also, like, dog, <laughs> like, dog, that's like straight up. There's yeah. the bad guys. Like, that's always the opening of the horror film when they want to introduce the serial killer. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> the, there, there was another one. Uh, once again, children, uh, yeah. out, out of the room. Okay. Put it on mute. Do, but, once but again, dude. for the next 15 seconds, there's, there's, there was another one that he came up with and he, he was and he was actually looking at moral reasoning as well, which was fascinating. This one was more to college students and he came up with the scenario. A brother and a sister um, decide one time when they're alone together, it might be fun to have. What? They use protection. There's no chance of them getting an STD. No. They're both happy that they did it afterwards and they agree never to do it again. And Negative they Ghost Rider. <laughs> but just, and so this was one of the questions what but what it was was everybody would instantly say absolutely not that is not okay but then they would ask him to try and justify it and they would be like um well uh they might get sick no we said they weren't going to get an scd well they might have a baby and that note we said that there's no chance of them having a baby they, well they might regret they it later baby. nope we we said they didn't regret it later well huh i i, I still don't think you should do it but and and mm. so kind of this moral reasoning they were trying to dig into that so that's interesting Point being, that's the purity scale. That's all kind of talking about that purity scale of moral foundations. Uh, Things okay. that you shouldn't do, even though it doesn't hurt anybody. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, like, where is this going, man? I'm scared. Dog, what, I, okay. Uh, for more of this, please read The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt. Uh, okay. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot of other stuff in that book. It's, it's great. I, I've read it twice, okay. actually. Okay. So what the B.H. Roberts Foundation did was they took this moral foundations theory and they sent it out as a questionnaire along with like your activity in the church questions to the Mormon corridor of the United States. Oh. And I think they got a pretty good sample size. I think it was 1300 or so sample size. Mm. And so if we pull up what they did, this graph is going to be a little complicated. Okay. And unfortunately I don't have where they broke it down piece by piece as we're slowly adding on to this graph. So we're okay. just kind of, kind of fire hose, get this whole graph all at once. Okay. And, I'll, I'll walk you through it. So what it's going to be, we're going to pull it up. Yeah, that'll be good. Okay. All right. So we'll pull it up here. So what's going on is the three colors. We kind of have five different columns and these are the five moral foundations, right? Yeah. And the audience can't see what that first set of five different results are. Okay. That's the harm and the care. Gotcha. And then fairness, reciprocity, in-group loyalty, authority, respect, purity, sanctity. So there's all five. Okay. The first three, okay. so the, the blue, green, and the red, Yes. are liberal American, moderate American, and conservative American in that order. Okay. So blue, liberal, green, moderate, red, conservative. Okay, cool. And then gotcha. there's a little space, and there's the blue and the purple. Yes, gotcha. And those... So the blue is Latter-day Saint and the purple is former Latter-day Saint. So essentially what wow. we're doing is wow. we're seeing the moral foundation averages scores for former and current Latter-day Saints. And then it's getting matched onto liberal, moderate and conservative American scores for okay. the same cool. thing. This okay. is kind of cool. So let's actually take it. Let's take it. The light blue and the purple. So the okay, two cool. outer ones on the graph. Okay, gotcha. And we're going to see how those track. So this is the liberal American and the former Latter-day Saint. So we can see liberal American, for, former Latter-day Saint, both very high on harm and care. Higher than current Latter-day Saints and conservatives. Mm, yeah. And they're the two highest. And then we move over to fairness, very high on it. So the former Latter-day Saints are tracking very highly with liberals and saying that harm and care and fairness and reciprocity... Repre are are very important to can, them. Can, can I just yeah. can I just inter, interject a doubt here? And remember, doubts are sacred. <laughs> um, what if these people are just full of crap, and just like Judas Iscariot tried to chastise Jesus and saying, "Oh, well, wh why wasn't this you know alabaster ointment sold and then the money given to the poor?" You know, because all of the studies show that though liberals scream from the rooftops about how much we're supposed to care about people all they of the less. money given to charity yeah they give the least amount 
Yeah. Like the people that talk the most about care and talk the most about fairness are the ones that don't want to provide it. They don't understand how difficult it is to actually give it. They, they want to make the, you provide They it. want to make you provide it through taxation and yeah. through their stupid woke programs that they're exempt from because I'm depressed. I'm too depressed to give, but damn it, you better. And it's just the most hypocritical garbage argument on the planet. Is this the same people we're talking about? Sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> this is just self reported. This is just self reported. Okay. That's Se- all we're looking at here. Self aggrandized self reporting. Okay. Yeah. All right. Self aggrandized. Well, the no, most. but <laughs> but all three of us actually took this test. And yes. Cardin, you just took it. And which so one of us ended gonna up see, being the most the most expert? Well, that's what we got to see, but we got to <laughs> read this data first before okay. we can see what our data is okay, and how okay, it relates okay, to okay, it. Okay. Okay. So if we go back to the graph, harm and fairness. Care and fairness, very important to the liberals and to Exmos. Liberals and Exmos, very important. If we move over to in-group and loyalty, once again, we're looking at the two outer ones on each of these columns. So the light blue and the purple. The liberals have a low in-group and loyalty score, but the former Latter-day Saints have a significantly lower in-group and loyalty score. Mm. So even relative to liberals... People who have left the church wow. have very little respect for in-groupness and authority. Okay? Wow. <laughs> Which is kind of, again, I think is full of crap because look at all I, of the I mean, sorry, podcasters. in-group and loyalty. Then if we move over to authority, okay. both, both the liberals and the people who have left the church have almost an equal and pretty low wow. authority and respect. They okay. track all over. This is crazy. Yep. And then if we move to purity and sanctity, liberal Americans and former Latter-day Saints have extremely low. This is the lowest of all the categories, extremely low purity and sanctity scores. So they care very little about actions that don't harm anybody, but that society has still deemed to be as wrong. Now, just to say at this point, Luke did not cherry pick these five out of 500. These are are the five yeah these are the are five tested. moral foundations yeah yeah and so this wow. is why in the data jonathan Hyde presented this at ted a pretty famous talk and one of the big things in his the righteous mind book and the righteous mind is actually trying to explain why we disagree fundamentally on morals across political spectrums is because we actually have different morals from each other and you said these are the original five but now it's been updated to six yeah now fairness has been split into equality and reciprocity okay okay yeah. awesome but we're we're going off the original yeah, five. The, yeah okay the og all yes. right so then if we go to latter-day saints and conservative americans so now in the call the five sets okay. of results for each of these five moral foundations these are going to be the inner is it this graph right inner, here no it's actually the same graph as before oh, okay, the red awesome. and the red and blue yeah. columns okay gotcha the red and the blue columns now we're going to look at that for each set for harm wow. and care um still pretty high conservative and latter-day saints latter-day saints are a little higher we care more about caring for people not harming them than your general conservative but it's still pretty high. Everybody cares about this. Fairness and reciprocity. 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 (laughs) We almost are the same. Current Latter-day Saints and conservative Americans are almost the same. In-group and loyalty is kind of lower, is low for everybody across the board, but conservatives and Latter-day Saints are almost equal and are higher than the progressives and the former Latter-day Saint. Then authority and respect... We actually don't care as much about authority than conservatives do. So Latter-day Saints don't care as much as about authority as conservatives do, okay. but it's still significantly higher than the liberals okay. and the former Latter-day Saints. And then for purity and sanctity, Latter-day Saints are actually significantly higher than conservatives in our the emphasis that we place Which, on a again, I purity call moral BS. foundation. I call BS because our redemption cult, like, dude, purity culture is not... That ain't a Latter-day Saint thing. Purity culture was invented by North American evangelicalism. And like some of it was imported, I think, especially in the 90s and the early 2000s into our culture more than it should have. But that's like a wholesale North American evangelical invention. We're not talking about purity culture. It's a little bit purity culture. Okay. But it's not, I have a napkin. It's not yeah. totally purity <laughs> culture. Okay. It's like it's like the questions that Jonathan Haidt created that, you're not harming anybody. You're all alone. Is something still 
gross or yeah. not and tracking whether or not you think that's gross. Because like if those were the parameters of the questions, I would be answering very low on well, the like, whatever, well, no, you do Cardin, you. Cardin, we're going to see what your scores are. Okay, cool. Let's so, see. Yeah, you don't need to comment on it. We're actually going to see what your numbers are I think and how they relate to Jonah see, and me. I, I took this test. My only problem with all these questions were they like, well, do you think you should always fight for your country? It's like, well, if it's a good country, yeah, you should fight till the freaking death. But if it's a degenerate, amoral one, then leave like the pilgrims did and form a new one. Disagree. You know what I'm saying? No countries worth dying for. Disagree. Oh, geez. You're not one of those pacifists, are you? <laughs> I'm oh, totally okay. a pacifist, brother. Okay, well, if we'll go fight so that you can freaking be cush in your pacifist apartment. Should, you know, yeah, have it's, fun. I'll leave flowers Cardin, on Cardin. the grave. Thank you. <laughs> it's more like this. If there are two equally good countries, should you always sometimes... Or mm. equally, or like no preference, fight for your own country. Oh, no, yeah. Within a margin of error, if all things are considered equal, then yes. However... Would you say always fight for your own country, all things being equal? Um. Well, yeah, if not, what point is there of having a country? Okay, so, you, so you're pretty high on authority. I mean, on in-group loyalty then. Yeah, but I've never, I've never seen, at least in modern history... A time when that's been like two pretty good and pretty moral countries just decided to, you know, know engage in I bloodshed. Know. But this is survey. So it's just, you, a, it's just a, yeah, it's a survey. It's, OK, it's, sure. Fine. It's your opinion on stuff. Fine. All right. Sure. So now let's go to the second graph. So the, the one okay. that's under the one that I just did. OK. The moral foundations one right here. Scores right? Latter-day Saints. Yeah. So now we've broken it down into we're just looking within the mormon spectrum you could say yes so on the right i mean sorry on the left we have latter-day saints and then it goes all the way over to former latter-day saints so yes. latter-day saints mm. all in latter-day saints selective latter-day saints and former latter-day saints wow so if so, we break so down the Luke, selective real quick i'm just going to explain the selective latter-day saints real quick uh and then i'll answer your question joda selective latter-day saints are the people who attend church at probably usually at least three times a month and they actually did this with with uh, data. So they put all the data into the computer, and then the computer itself split out with an algorithm who's considered all in and who's considered a selective Latter Day Saint. Okay, so they attend church like three times a week. So not inactive, but not every Sunday they're going to be there. They think maybe the church might change on priesthood being given to women, but they're not committed to it. They think the church might change on gay ceilings, but they're not saying they have to but they're just kind of in the middle on it. And then you can kind of go down the list and infer how they might answer other questions. Whereas the all in people say, yes, the book of Mormon is literal. I attend church basically every week. I read my scriptures almost every day. I pray every day, all that stuff. Then the selectives are iffy about it, but they're still in the church. All right, Jonah. So what, so, and don't, I'm not criticizing the, the design of the graph, but it sounds like it's trending. Green is very LDS. If you could scale this, and I know this is dicey language, but green is extremely LDS, obnoxiously LDS, which I proudly am. Blue is a little less so. Light blue, nah, and then purple, you're out. If you were to switch the green and the blue columns, these would all be trends. You'd see that as you get away from the church, your actually, hair actually, goes up. You're actually incorrect, Jonah. The blue is the average, so all Latter-day Saints together, and then it's split into the green and the light blue. So if we look no, on that's the, exactly what I'm saying. So you, what you should have done is put the green first. So it's a very LDS oh, trending to less LDS. There's, and two, you would have seen there's the, two different blues. So I misunderstood. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yes. So you, what you would have seen is this trend that as you become further from the church, your harm care goes up, your reciprocity fairness goes up, your in-group loyalty goes down, your authority goes down, and your purity goes down. Now, here's the most interesting Perfect. part. And if we pull up the graph again, what we're going to see... Okay, yeah, but it also just kind of seems like, what, this is some commercial for the Exmo anti-Mormon com uh, community that, oh, look, Ward Radio proves you're a more caring person if you leave the church. See, and that's why I said that they would agree with the having a skewed moral foundation. Mm -hmm. They're going to be yeah. like, heck yeah, we care more about harm and care than we do about loyalty and authority. And is what that are you when talking we, about? Is that when we step in and say, yeah, sorry, stats show that you're full of crap? Or what? <laughs> like, is it, is that, that, that's a different podcast. You're all talk. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if, yeah, all if right. we pull, yeah, if we pull up the graph again, you can kind of just ignore the dark blue 
the navy blue for okay. each one of these. So that's not there. And what it is is green, light blue, purple is your spectrum of all in the church, kind of half and half, and then out of the church. Okay. So just like Jonah was saying, but look at look at how the light blue, so the kind of in the church and the purple go together. So the wow. people who are only half in the church are more closer to Exmos on harm and care than they are to members of the church. They are m- closer to Exmos in fairness than they are to members of the church. Wow. They're way closer in their opinions on loyalty to Exmos than they are to members of the church. They're yeah. much, much closer in author- their opinions on authority as a moral foundation. It's hard to talk about the graph and it's not up for the audience. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, authority and respect are much closer to authority and respect than they are to members of the church. But now we get to the last one. So, so far, people who are half in, half out of the church have trended much closer to um, Exmos than they have to members. But on this last one, it looks like on purity that they're closer to members, I mean to Exmos. So, the people that are half in look like they are, are closer yeah. to Exmos and purity. Yeah. But we have to think about scale proportionality here and so their score out of five is actually about three times higher than Mm. the exmos and so proportionally speaking people who are half in half out of the church are much closer to exmos on every one of the moral foundations except for purity Mm. where they are closer to members of the church so the purity scale is kind of it seems to be kind of the anchor point that's the biggest determining factor of whether you're going to be a person out of the church or in the church interesting and that's the one part that that divert isn't that fascinating that they split on that one yeah Yeah, they would they would say that only the judgmental purity culture people keep you in the church because it's an oppressive society and patriarchy exactly exactly meanwhile it's like yeah you have your own purity it's like your purity Uh test is do you hate white people enough that you are washing of your original sin of whiteness? Do you hate, like, you know, like, there, see, our purity test is do you love things? Theirs is do you hate things enough? Do you hate things enough? You know what I'm right, saying? Yeah. Like, have you, have you already repented in front of, you know, Facebook with a very long, like, is your original sin your patriarchy? You know, it's like, please, dude. Did you tell your parents you hate them publicly? Yeah, yeah, oh, exactly. then you're one of us. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. Okay, cool. So, um, Anyway, so how it. did we how did we fare? Yeah, on so this? now we're gonna look at our results. Oh gosh. Okay, <laughs> cool. So who's do we want to do first? Uh is this one whose is this? It's actually the the first set of graphs. The first do we want to look graphs. at all of them together or do we want to look at each one of us individually? I guess let's, let's look, look at them together. Who's all is together? This? this is Jonah's, right? I think we oh. want to look at them together. Okay, I don't know how what do you mean look at them together? Uh the Graph that says oh, who's, who's more Exmo? Oh, the, the first one. Did you put them all in one? Yeah. So each, yeah. all three of us <laughs> took this test. Okay, and then we put them all together. Okay. So it goes the way each of these five columns works. Okay. Is Luke, Card, and Jonah. Okay. Oh, Luke, dude. Card, and Jonah, and then wait. Show US, the audience again because the graph was up. Luke. Wait, so the way the graph works is Luke, Card, and Jonah, and then the average US, and then Exmos. Okay. And Luke, on Card, your, and Jonah, average Exmos. So it's flipped. What you show on the screen, because the camera is flipped the other way. So on the left is Luke. The yeah. orange is Cardin. The green is Jonah. The gray is the average. And then ex-Mormon, anti-Mormons is... Um, red. Is the red. Okay, Just cool. remember that the green in the middle is the barometer. Everything okay. off from that is wrong. Uh, some, the green being Jonah. Degree. Yeah, the green is correct. Just so let's pull it. Okay, cool. And I'm fascinated about this because we made this graph right as we were about to record, so I haven't even gotten to look I at it a lot. I haven't looked at it yet. Okay, okay let's cool. stare deeply so here at we this go. thing let's now. Let's stare deeply at this All right. thing now. So Cardin. Cardin is very high on care. Oh, so I'm a Higher raging the Exmo? Us. I'm the raging <laughs> Exmo? Is that, I'm, I'm, but I'm just not self-aggrandizing or what? Apparently, you're even higher on care than the Exmos are. Oh, interesting. Okay, we're all yep. higher. No, no, you're you're the same, Jonah. <laughs> oh, thanks. You're the same as the average in the Exmos. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, okay. and I'm then Cardin and I are a little higher. Okay, and then the next one. But now here's where we start to diverge from the Exmos because all of us are almost the same on fairness, which is slightly higher 
than the average of the population, but lower than the Exynos. So they care a lot about fairness. And remember, once again, this gets broken down into reciprocity. Is that, yeah. am I saying that word right? Yep. And, yep. and, uh, but again, we can't let them equality. steal, we can't let them steal words though. Is segregating the Harvard dorms and <laughs> kicking out all of the Asians and kicking out all of the Hindu Americans and kicking out all of the Slavic and kicking out all of the Italian and the white people from the dorms and saying black people only here? Is that fairness or is that racism? I'm surprised that you're being the more raging conservative in this episode than I am. <laughs> well, it's because I'm so tired of the theft of words. I know, I know. Yeah. You yeah, know, like know. I'm just so tired of the, the theft posturing. of words, especially yeah. when it's just virtue signaling garbage. And we live in a society of just virtue signaling technocrats. And I don't know. It Whoa, just, Cardin. Yeah, what? Go, go to the graph. Okay, go to the graph. Go yeah. to the graph. Yeah, what? You are the highest by far of loyalty. Oh, yeah. And everybody I, else. I saw that one coming. Yeah. I'm I extremely saw that loyal too. to my friends. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it, it's just funny for all the nuance that you're trying to throw into of like, well, if your country's good, if your country's bad, like you should. And then when you actually take the test, no, you're like so loyal compared to everybody else. Because all the questions were about athletics, though. There's like, oh, do you think it's very that the, one of the most important aspects of being a team is the cohesive? Well, no, that's and not athletics. That. You're a team at work. Yeah, or as a family. we're a team. Oh, were we not a team? Okay, team I don't know. I, I view this, if this is Jonathan Haidt's best survey, he needs to call me in as a consultant <laughs> to tell him how to do a better job. Oh. That's what this <laughs> podcast is really about, Jonathan. Call us up. Okay. All right, so I'm pretty high on authority on this okay. graph. Cardin's like really high on authority. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jonah's kind of like the average population as uh -huh. much as he cares about authority. And then the Exmos are significantly lower than all of us. So wow. we cleared that one. Moving on to okay, the next round. Okay, okay. Uh, once again, Cardin takes the cake, being the highest on authority somehow. Jeez. Man, did you mix these up, Jonah? <laughs> I was actually <laughs> no, not no, expecting this. Put them in. I guess there's like a margin of error. So once you get, did you answer yes or no on this one specific question? And that could bump it up and, and down. Don't, but, don't try to don't do basically, that. Don't fight the data. <laughs> but basically, Jonah, uh, Cardin, and I are all pretty darn high on authority as one of our moral foundations significantly higher than the general population which is higher than exmos by a decent amount but now i'm the raging expo on purity like i don't care no, no, about no, no, purity no. yeah <laughs> so <laughs> so so if purity is the indicator which the data has shown if purity is the indicator of being out of the church versus in the church <laughs> cardin is not in danger of leaving the church okay uh -huh. you're you're way higher than the exmos and the average population which don't but, care about purity hardly at all, but, but you're lower than all of than, you. And I'm the yeah. raging purity police. <laughs> I'm the highest on purity, which I saw coming. Maybe I everybody will not saw the chicken. I, saw I will not. I did not have <laughs> with that chicken. <laughs> and what does it mean? <laughs> what do you mean you saw that coming, Luke? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I took this test like two years ago when I read the book and I got a, let me just pull up the actual, because it gives you like a percentile as well. And on the purity scale, I am 96.3 percentile on the purity scale. Oh, so, geez. Yeah. So if you line up a hundred people, only three of those people will have on average a higher purity score than me. I'm um, talking about purity Holy sanctity. Holy Toledo. Yeah. Which is like way higher than the average. Did you hear what he population. said though, Cardin? He's like, I knew that I knew that was how it's going to be with purity. <laughs> Meaning that he looked at both of us and yeah. he was like, oh, "I'm going to be way more pure." No, these degenerates. No, I was degenerates. just talking about in terms of in terms of my percentiles. Uh -huh. My Walk it back. my next yeah. highest percentile was authority. Damage control. I'm 93 percentile on authority, so I'm like I'm pretty high on authority, but I'm 96 percentile on, on purity. It's like way up there. Well, also, so I figured I'd be the highest. Well, also the nature of the questions, I think is a little bit of the problem as well because our only options were basically like oh this kind of describes me oh it describes me fairly Here well or else, oh this totally Here describes me and and no i'm just saying that all this graph really shows to me is intensity some people just answer the question a little bit more intensely but in all of these graphs they all kind of skew upwards and to the left it's just a question to the intensity thereof so 
I, I, I don't know if that can be taken that, into that consideration. That sounds like that's, that's what it's supposed to measure. Is okay, sure. Maybe. It's on a scale. Like, oh. It's on a spectrum. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> so I'm a good person, Luke. <laughs> so it looks like none of us are in danger of becoming an ex-Mormon. But if somebody was... It would probably be Cardin. However, be he Cardin. has pretty high. But see, here's the thing: Cardin is very Dude, high. I raise chickens, bro. You're yeah. <laughs> you're you're very high. You're higher than Jonah and me on loyalty and authority. So actually, like on average, we're all about equally unlikely to become ex Mormon. But if we just look at of purity as the key Which indicator, the strongest, we could say yeah, that's the strongest indicator. correlation. Then. Cardin still has no chance of becoming Exmo unless he changes his morals. It's just a higher chance than Jonah. And me. Well, also I'm not full of crap and I don't lie. <laughs> you know like what I'm I saying? Did. Like honesty was no, no. I'm I was just taking saying, the survey. I'm like, I'm going to get 100 percent on purity. <laughs> I'm going to show these guys. <laughs> no, no. I'm just saying I, I'm not in danger of going inactive because I don't self congratulate and say I care about so many people so much that I'm going to hate my parents and not let them see their grandchildren like that's how much I care you know like that mm-hmm. I, I don't know I just uh, is hypocrisy measured on here N- no you but, know, but yeah. so so B.H. Roberts did great work on this um, okay survey this is very very fascinating but Jonah actually also did his own survey okay down at the bottom of the discord I did, and I did. obviously this is real yeah I'm gonna defer to survey. you I'm gonna defer to you Jonah yeah. to explain us through this but I just want to so congratulate I, you on your work that so you did I sent here. out a survey to some prominent figures uh here in the ex-Mormon community John Dillon Alyssa Grenfell Nahor Judas and then as a control Mother Teresa and we asked them <laughs> questions on five different categories uh the blue uh first on the left here is how do you feel about punching babies? Oh. <laughs> um, you can see that uh, John Delin is is better than average. She's, he seems pretty fine and warm about punching babies. <laughs> Alyssa Grenfell, not so much. She's a woman. You'd expect that. <laughs> Nahor loves punching those babies. He loves it. He punches babies to start off his day right. <laughs> um, Judas, surprisingly, d- is not a fan of punching babies. Some of that could be in the culture of the time. Mother Teresa, not at all. Okay. Uh, next, we have swinging. <laughs> swinging, obviously, John Delin, all about it. Um, along with Alyssa Grenfell, Nahor, Judas, big into it. Mother Teresa, again, not a fan. Um, slaying Gideon. Slaying Gideon, <laughs> John Delin, seems right about average with it. Alyssa Grenfell's a little more positive towards it. Nahor, uh, I think this could be some of that hypocrisy scale coming in here. He says, oh, no, not me. Oh, no, not me, he says. <laughs> I would never um, say And Gideon. then Judas, who has a history of betraying people to their deaths, seems right about average as well. Mother Teresa not having it. Next, we have but, pineapple but on pizza. she's slightly having it. She's like slightly having it. She's like, you know, she's like, eh, it depends on who Gideon is. I could see that. <laughs> um, uh, pineapple on pizza was another uh, moral, uh, ethical question we proposed to them. John DeLynn is a little less inclined. Alyssa Grenfell, absolutely no pineapple on pizza. <laughs> Nahor is a little more, feels a little better about that. Maybe not too much pineapple, maybe a little bit. Judas loves pineapple on pizza. Kind of surprising. And Mother Teresa also is all right with pineapple on pizza. And lastly, do you like Disney Star Wars? Um, uh, <laughs> and John DeLynn was right about average. Alyssa Grenfell loves Disney Star Wars, and I think we all expected that. I think we were all we That's all expected that. Funny. Nahor also a fan of Disney Star Wars. Judas, I think the only answer he provided was, "What is Disney Star Wars?" In Aramaic, I wrote <laughs> okay. that in the margin. And then Mother Teresa also pretty warm towards Disney Star Wars. So I'm surprised that Mother is Teresa's the, that warm towards Disney Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, she That's can get on board. She loved hmm. the acolyte. She okay. loved the acolyte. Interesting. Um, so yeah, so you can see kind of this is the real uh, moral survey that that really has. I know Jonathan Haidt is trying to dabble in this stuff, but we've got the real answers here at Ward Radio. Um, <laughs> pineapple on pizza, Judas, huge fan. Who knew? Alyssa Grenfell loves Disney Star Wars. Now, now you know. By the way, like think about this, guys. I was alive, I believe, when Return of the Jedi came out. I was technically alive. I think Return of the Jedi was released in 1985, right? Uh, 85, yeah. Uh, so what was it the last? Oh no, May 25th, 1983 was when Return of the. So that was I was I was I was technically alive. I was but a wee babe, only months old, right? But I was technically alive when Star Wars Return of the Jedi was released. So I was there 
when the last of the original Star Wars trilogy was made. And in my life, lifetime, in one lifetime, in these brief three decades around the sun, I've seen it go from George Lucas, A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi into The Acolyte. Like, uh, like just if there's any proof of what wokeism can degenerate a culture into, it's just the future is mm. female. The future is the acolyte. Your IP now sucks. See, you know, I am so actually old like, enough to remember when pineapple was the first ingredient that was put on pizza when it was brought over from Italy in 1982 what? on a very mm-hmm. large tanker ship called the Titanica. Uh, got over thousands of pounds. What are you talking of about? Pizza, and it only and it was just bread and cheese and pineapple. And I have managed to see in one lifetime how it is just. This is what wokeness does. Now you can't put pineapple on your pizza without getting a second look from people. You can't even walk outside with a, a slice of Hawaiian pizza in your hands. It's without, Canadian without being discriminated bacon against. and pineapple. It's Canadian bacon, not ham. Canadian it wasn't bacon. Canadian back then. It was Yukon. It was a uh, Inuit, Inuit bacon. Actually. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Made out of seal meat. It was seal meat, right? Okay, cool. Polar bear meat. So, okay, awesome. Well, anything else? Do do we got anything else we got to say? What? So, what's your thesis? What's the big takeaway, Luke Hansen? Like you, the conclusion. Yeah, your conclusion. That's the word I was looking for, bro. The conclusion is. No, oh, <laughs> so, so no, that's not <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I think partly the conclusion is just now you know, like now we have more information about, especially what the moral differences might be between you. Uh, actually, let's back up slightly. They don't have data on when this happens in the process because it was just a one-time survey, not an overtime survey. So they don't know if having low purity m- moral foundation scale makes you leave the church or if it's after you leave the church then you develop a very low score in the purity foundation or if it tracks along with it so as you deconvert from the church you are deconverting away from a higher purity score to a lower purity score and i'm just using purity as a proxy for all five of these well also how much of it is that you've just accepted a new catechism and you're just reciting that catechism like so how- that yeah that's what i'm saying is they don't we, I think we can infer that it trends like as you're leaving the church, your morals are changing because I don't they believe were. I don't believe that all of the Mormons like actually practice as much purity as they're preaching because like I, I was a young man at BYU. I know how many people got into trouble with their girlfriends. I know how it's like like it's like I don't think the 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 active members are like practicing as much as the, as they preach, right? But then I also have noticed like from our hate watchers and what you see on X Mormon subreddit and what they say about us, it is kind of like when you leave the church, you almost feel like you have to develop a new catechism. Like you have to try every drug that you were like, <laughs> you missed out on apparently. As if like, I don't know, methamphetamines was like some rite of passage. You weren't allowed because you're in the Boy Scouts or something, okay? But there's, there's, there's that and there's a strange new catechism that you must recite like it wasn't oh a pretty wholesome upbringing in a nice neighborhood with a boy good boy scout troop and a wholesome group of young men that i could play with they kept me out of trouble that my peers without as good and wholesome of an upbringing uh were not afforded like you're not allowed to look at it that way you have to say oh it was really this predatory organization run by an angry patriarchy who is trying to auction us off to a cabal all of pedophiles who refused background checks and wanted to interview me as an eight-year-old freaking weirdos, you know? And it's like, uh, okay, how much are the low scores on people that have left just them self-aggrandizing and reciting the, uh, the new catechism? And how much of the high scores on the right of the active people is them reciting kind of like what they think they should have been instead of what they really are? Like how much of this on both sides is just dogma and not reality. Does that make sense? Oh, it's definitely reality, I would say. Really? Because you gave it away when you started off. You said, I knew a lot of people at BYU that got in trouble with their girlfriends. Conceiving it as getting in trouble with your girlfriend is part of the Purity Moral Foundation. 
what they're pushing back against is the idea that you're getting in trouble with your girlfriend. Mm. Oh, oh, wow. Ah. Pretty good. So I, here's what I think. I know okay. everybody's been listening to you guys. I don't know why they're you know, waiting for me. Cause, <laughs> Sorry, know. Jonah. Um, <laughs> here's what, what I see. This is Dr. Jeffrey Thane uh, did a great presentation on worldview apologetics. Anybody's ever seen his presentation on worldview apologetics about how these things are like the top of the spring and everything else is downstream. So you think that religion or policy or politics is like upstream, and this is actually even farther up than that. So your moral foundation, what you think about authority and 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 uh, purity and loyalty and those things are actually more foundational than even your religion is kind of what it sounds like. Um, Interesting. So, but if you haven't seen Dr. Jeffrey Dan's presentation on worldview apologetics, he takes two uh, BYU students, seemingly exactly the same upbringing, and yet they have totally different views on like LGBT issues. And he says, how is this possible? One of them leaves the church and one of them embraces the church. Like they seem to be the same. Like, what are we missing? And he says, you have to go deeper and look at their moral worldview. And it's an excellent presentation. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Thane, worldview apologetics. Like you have to be self-loathing, hate your parents. Yeah. You know, the whole nine yards. He actually did it at the fair conference just a couple days ago. He gave that presentation Excellent, excellent Mm -hmm. job. I thought his stuff was Who is this again? Who is this? Dr. Jeffrey Thane. He prefers pineapple and olive pizza. Ah, weird, he is, he is weird an, guy. He is an erudite, an erudite man. Okay, well, guys, uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, let us know what you guys think. Do you think there is indeed, um, I don't want to say homogeneity or a uniform moral code, but do you think there's consistency in these uh, in these conclusions we have drawn with your life experience because we want to respect your lived experience see what i did there you guys see what i did there yeah so let us know let us know what you guys think in the comments below and as always for this and more please make sure you guys check us out at wardradio.com hey guys thanks for watching the video we assume if you made it this far that you liked our content so please make sure that you smash that like button and you share this video with your friends also If you haven't subscribed yet to our channel, please make sure that you subscribe and you press the alert button so you receive alerts on every one of our daily uploads. Now, we want to make sure that we keep all of this content flowing for free to you, the viewer, and to do that, we need your help. If you're a person of means, please consider a direct contribution through Venmo or through Zelle, and the links to those platforms will be in the description as well. Also, if you wanna help us out, please make sure you buy some of our merch. We got really cool hats, really cool t-shirts for both boy and girl viewers, all available on wardradio.com. And while you're there, you can sign up for our Ward Radio newsletter. You can receive all the really great Ward Radio news directly in your inbox simply by putting your email address in wardradio.com. And finally, if you guys want to help out purchasing some of the equipment in the studio, you can always check out our Amazon wish list that is also available in the description of this video. And either way, whether you're pressing this button here to make sure you're subscribed to our channel or whether you're watching another video here just because you like our stuff, we look forward to seeing you guys in the next program.